For people in wheelchairs, they offer the chance to walk again. A new type of robotic leg has just arrived in this country and they allow incredible new freedom for disabled people. Sophie Morgan was paralysed from the chest down at just 18 and she was one of the first to try out the new technology here. This is her story of standing tall and walking proud for the first time in 10 years. It was 2003 and I was 18 years old. I'd just left school and spent the summer travelling. I was having the time of my life. But then one night my life changed forever. A car accident damaged my spine and nearly killed me. I was paralysed from the chest down and would never walk again. My priorities quickly changed as I was forced to reassess my life and I decided to swap law school for art school and since then have made the most of every opportunity that has come my way. The groundbreaking 2012 Paralympic Games showcased the abilities of disabled people like never before. I was part of Channel 4's presenting team. The team have clearly made an amazing impression. We just need to work on those names now. And saw firsthand what humans can achieve when technology removes the boundaries of limitation. I've not let my disability hold me back, and I know I can do anything I want to. But the one thing I can't do is stand up. My partner Tom and I have been together for five years, but he's only ever known me in a wheelchair. We, we have a van and she sits up on our, if, if we open the door and she sits on, on the side of the seat facing out, then she's at the same height as almost we're standing and we always give each other a big hug there. Because I'm always looking it's for a, hugs. Yeah. And a, then, <laughs> but it's always a, like that, it's a sort of awkward position, isn't it? So. Yeah. yeah. There are walking aids yeah. available, but the nature of my paralysis is that I'm completely unable to feel or move my body below my chest. This is Rex, an exoskeleton robot from New Zealand, which is going to enable me to stand up and move around my own home for the first time in 10 years, something I never thought I would be able to do. This pioneering technology has just arrived in the UK and I'm able to trial it. When you're ready to stand up, just push forward. Bloody hell. You're up. <laughs> You're up. I <laughs> See, realistically, yeah. I've got um, an inch, haven't I? So where would I be? be there? Yeah, you'd be about. So, right, about yeah, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you look amazing. <laughs> God, do you not get scared being this no. tall? What, no. <laughs> it's just the girl's so far away. The dogs look <laughs> so small. So, what do you want to do? Do you want to. Um, I'll make some food. Heat the beans, or do you want to. Slice some bread for the toast and that sort of thing. I'll heat the beans. The natural act of standing reminded me of all the simple things I once took for granted. In particular, an unrestricted hug. Well, that's so nice, stay there. I'm at the Welcome Collection in London where they're staging an exhibition called Superhuman. They're looking at the advancements in technology and wondering what that might mean for human enhancement. <laughs> I hoped advances in medicine would one day help me to walk again, but instead, technology has got there first. Yeah. The device that you're standing in today, which really points towards the future of how technology is really going to increase its impact on the improvement of people's everyday lives. And so that rather than seeing any sort of loss or absence or a formal function as a disability, as a sort of site of potential, which I think is a real leap forward. So what does that potential look like? The robotic exoskeleton has leg cuffs and harnesses to keep my body in line and support my weight. Movement is controlled through a joystick and 29 onboard computer processors. It means I can stand and walk independently and upright without crutches, but unfortunately it doesn't come cheap at £150,000. And this is something that if I, if I was able to have one of these, I wouldn't want to get out of it. But it's not that accessible, is it? Well, it's like all technology. It starts off, it's, it's relatively expensive. We think it's good value still for what it does, but technology moves on with time. It gets smaller, it gets lighter, it gets cheaper, it gets more accessible. I think one of the restrictions of 
being in a wheelchair is, is really the limited view, the lower perspective. And it's something that you, you get used to, but you never really feel, I've never really felt that comfortable with or that yeah. happy about. So being able to do something like this and be able to walk it is just something that really is something from a dream. Technology is finally enabling disabled people to defy their physical restrictions. All good? Walking along Brighton Beach was incredible, and returning in a wheelchair will never be the same. But the costs are out of reach for many, and the pace is slow. But who knows where we'll be 10 years from now? I could even be running down Brighton Beach. <laughs>